Hello everybody, this is John Buck, back with another ECE 320 video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a graphical approach to understanding linearity proofs. Uh, this video complements the one I've already recorded called Revisiting Time Invariance. Uh, so it, it takes the same kind of block diagram approach to understand, explaining how proofs work for linearity. Uh, and after this video, I'll record a, uh, another example video showing us applying this approach to the example we've already done of the modulator. Okay, so let's switch over to the whiteboard and see how it works. So proving linearity, we, we've said in class, comes with two steps. I'm going to suggest just for a moment of review, take a moment and pause the video and remind yourself or think for yourself, what are the two steps that we need to prove to prove linearity? Okay, now that you're back, hopefully you came up with, with the right two. The first one is scaling. And the second one is superposition, right? For a system to be linear, it has to satisfy both of these properties. And so we usually check them one at a time. And just strategically, I always check scaling first because scale, if scaling fails, then I'm done. And scaling is the easier one to check. So I'll usually start there. So, so let's see, remind ourselves what scaling means. If I have an input x of n going through some system s to give me an output y of n, what scaling says is that if I take that output y of n and then follow it by uh, follow that output by uh, running it through a gain of a. Okay, so I run it through a gain of a. Maybe I call that output z of n. Oh, oh weird scaling there in the font size. So I call this z of n. Right. What, what the scaling property says is if I do these two things in this, the other order, if I scale by A first and then run it through the system, I should get the same answer. So let's draw another branch showing that. Okay, so I took the input uh, and I took my X of N and immediately scale it first. And let's say we'll call that F of N. And then after scaling it, now I'm going to put it through the system S. And the output of that system I will call... Uh, g of n, right? So, so if I think about, and then so what for the scaling property to hold, z of n and g of n have to be the same for all inputs, for for whatever the system is for a given system s I plug in. But big picture, what it's saying is I should get the same answer whether I go through the system first and then scale by a, or scale by a and then go through the system. So that leads me to my key question which is R Z, is Z of n equal to G of n. So, and if, if I think about what's going on here, this is the same question I was doing before, because if I, I don't know what S is for any system here, but I can say, well, if Y of n is the input to this gain of A, then this output is A Y of n, right? So we're basically asking, is A Y of n equal to G of n when the input over here would be A times X of n? right? Because I've taken x of n and run it through this gain by a, and then it comes through s, right? So, so I'm really asking is the, when the input is a scaled version of the other input, is the output the same as a scaled version of the other output? The same key question I had before, but it's often easier to think of it as this map for many students, and then this step-by-step -step procedure in the algebra works the same. Okay, so that's the scaling half, what does a block diagram look like for superposition? Well, superposition involves adding two different outputs from, from two different inputs. So I have an input x1 of n that goes through this system to give me y1 of n, and then an input x2 of n that goes through this system to give me y2 of n. And then I add those two outputs, and I call the result of that adding z of n. Okay, and then what superposition says is, is again, it's about changing the orders. It's saying, should it, do I get the same thing if I add first and go through the system? So let's start drawing that. We'll, we'll bring our two inputs down. So once we've brought them down to their own section of the graph, now we're going to add them together first before we put them through the system. So we've added our two, our input, x1 and x2 of n, we've added them together 
Uh, we'll call that new thing f of n. And then we're going to uh, take that new input and put it through our system. So our output, when the new input is f of n, the output to the system is g of n. And we can't solve this right away because it depends on the system. We'll get different answers for y1, y2, and g for different systems. But the overall map of how we do this proof is the same, and we get the same key question for every proof of superposition. I'm going to move the page up just a little bit. which when we've drawn it this way, the key question for superposition becomes, is g of n equal to z of n? Right, so for any, which is saying, do we get the same answer whether we take our two inputs, put them through the system first, then add them, or whether we take the two inputs and add them first and then put them through the system? This roadmap will work for any superposition print, proof rather. We need to have a specific system to test what we're going to plug in for s, to actually check it, but the strategy will be the same as the algebraic thing that we've, we've already discussed, or that's on, on the handout, which is basically you need to get both G using the definition of the system you're testing, rewrite G and Z in terms of the original inputs X1 and X2, so that that's how you can compare them to figure out whether the key question is true or false. Once you've done this for scaling and superposition, then you'll know whether the system is linear. Okay, so I'm going to stop this video here with the general roadmap for all of them. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to apply this, this roadmap to the case of the modulator example we've already seen. So what does that example look like when you apply this roadmap to it, going through the algebraic steps for each box along the way? All right, so that's all for now. I'll see you shortly in the example video.